Hello and welcome back to the Remnant tutorial series. If you're new here, my name is Jerzen, I'm a third year medical student. Last week we spoke about making great flashcards, but today we're going to be talking about how to study those flashcards using spaced repetition. Remnote has a built-in spaced repetition algorithm that, based on your reaction to different flashcards, shows them to you at when it thinks is the appropriate time. Let's talk about the master queue first. This is where you can practice all the flashcards in your knowledge base together. Since most, if not all, the flashcards in my knowledge base are study related, I use the master queue as my primary spaced repetition center. Before clicking into the master queue, we can see some elements right here. So this first element right here is your daily flashcard streak. So this shows you how many days in a row you have reached your daily flashcard target. Remnote automatically sets this target or you can change it in the settings. Right next to that we have a little star icon that shows me that I've hit my daily target today because I had a great study session earlier. And the number right next to it shows you how many flashcards you currently have in your master queue, meaning how many flashcards do you have to study based on the spaced repetition algorithm. So let's go into the queue and let me explain the different elements that we can see here. So in the top right corner, you can see your daily target and how many days you've hit it for. And right next to that, we can see a button that can enable you to toggle between a larger interface or a smaller interface like you can see here. The number on top here shows you how many flashcards you have in your queue currently. And this green bar here, which is usually not green, it, it progressively gets green, shows you how many cards you have to get to your daily target. So unlike other flashcard apps like Anki, Remno gives you context for each flashcard. So right here, we can see that even though this is the master queue showing all the flashcards, cards, I can still tell which subject this is from. So this is from general pharmacology. And this question is different mechanisms through which drugs interact with our bodies. So I'm just going to hit the space bar here to show the answer. And we can see that the entire interface has been changed to make the flashcard pop in a way. So we can see our answer here. And down here, we can see different buttons. So on the right here, we can see the reactions that we have to the flashcard. I call them reactions, but you know, you can call them whatever. It's based on these reactions that the space repetition algorithm determines when to show you the flashcard again, if at all. So Remnote has four reactions instead of the usual three. We have this button here, which has a shortcut M, which is when you were unable to recall the flashcard, recall the flashcard partially. So if you have like maybe three drugs to memorize, you only remember one, you would hit this button. The shortcut is K. The next button is when you recall the flashcard completely, but with minimal effort. And this final one is for those flashcards that you just, you know, immediately get. And the shortcut for that is the key L. Other than these reaction buttons, we have some other buttons here too. So this button, it's probably my favorite. The shortcut for this one is H. And this is when you accidentally click show answer. And this has been a lifesaver. So I tend to practice RAM node flashcards on my phone. And a lot of times when I just click the screen, it shows me the answer. And I don't want to say that I didn't get the answer because sometimes I do know the answer, but you know, I just accidentally clicked it and it's going to mess up the algorithm. This will put it back in the queue and it'll show it to you in one one hour, which is great. The next button is for all the left-handed people out there. This is to flip the button order. So the reactions come on the left side and the other buttons come on the right side. I'm going to go to the other one because I am right-handed. The next two buttons are for editing this flashcard. You have two options. You can either edit the flashcard right now, or you can add it to the edit later queue. I'm going to put this flashcard into the edit later queue because the edit now button just takes you to the interface automatically. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to click this answer. So I can explain these last ones. So the next two buttons are for disabling the flashcard. So the first one is to disable this flashcard, meaning that this specific flashcard in whatever way that it's showing the answer to you will be disabled. But the button next to it is for disabling all flashcards from this RAM. So this is for those concept flashcards, which show you the flashcard two ways forwards and backwards. And you want to disable the flashcard completely. You don't want to see the entire RAM. You would click this button. But if you only want to cancel out this flashcard from your queue, you would hit this button. Remember the edit later queue that we put the other flashcard into? So you can see a little interface has popped up right under the queue and documents. And this is your edit later queue. This only shows up if you have flashcards in your edit later queue. So clicking into that, we can see the flashcard that has popped up here and we can click into that. So I'm going to shift click and we can see where exactly the flashcard is and we can edit however we want. And once we're done editing, we can click this button right here. And now that we did that, we can see that the edit later queue has disappeared from the sidebar and it's gone back into the queue. We didn't have anything to edit in the flashcard. So it's going to remain the same. Now the master queue is really helpful for studying all your flashcards and it usually shows it to you in a different order. So sometimes you might get a pharmacology question. Sometimes you might get a language question. If you think that that's a bad idea and you don't want to do that, you can also practice your flashcards individually within each subject, or maybe you have a test in a certain topic and you just want to study that topic. You can do that. So going into the sidebar, this is how I tend to practice all my flashcards. If I have to practice flashcards for a specific subject, I have all my flashcards organized by subjects. They're all in folder. So the subject names are the folder names. And for example, if I want only want to practice pharmacology, I can just click this little button right next to the folder. And that's going to show me all the flashcards in pharmacology. As you can see, there are only 91 flashcards in the specific queue. 
that's because there are only pharmacology questions at 135 in my master queue because it includes other subjects. Now, what if you don't want to study some specific subjects? So over here, let's go into let, let's go into cholinergic agents, for example. What if you only want to study cholinergic agents or some specific subject? What you would do is you would click these three buttons right here in the corner and you can hit practice document. This will allow you to practice your REM or your flashcards in two ways with space repetition or without. I use the study without space repetition option a lot for last minute studying because I don't want to depend on the space repetition algorithm. I just want to see all my flashcards. Sometimes I go through that multiple times. This isn't the way you're supposed to do flashcards, but we all know that there are those moments when you're studying and you just want to see all your flashcards. You don't you don't care about the space repetition algorithm. Then you just, you just want to study, you know? So you can hit that and that's going to show you all your flashcards. And if you want to study with the algorithm, you can hit the button on top. Now let's jump into the mobile side of things. I tend to practice my flashcards cards mostly when I'm on the go. If I'm waiting in line somewhere or if I'm just on the couch, I don't want to take out my laptop just to study, so I tend to study more on my phone. There is no dedicated REM node application for iOS as of yet. I do know that there's an Android application, but I have not gotten a chance to mess around with it, so I really can't comment on it. But there is an alternative. So you can go onto your phone, you can go to your browser, so I use Safari, and you can head to remnote.io, so the web client. And there is a mobile interface, it's not going to be the exact same as a desktop, and it's going to prioritize studying your flashcards. So we can see right here, I have my queue again, it's the exact same, and if I hit show answer, we have the exact same options. Do note that this looks darker because it's in dark mode on my phone, even though it's on light mode on my laptop because my phone is always in dark mode. We can see that the flashcard Q is pretty much the same and we have all our exact same options. But one cool feature of Remnote on the phone or on, on the Safari client is that you can just swipe for different reactions. So for example, if I didn't get this flashcard, I can just swipe to the left. If I do get the flashcard, I can just swipe up and the other options are right and bottom. And this is great because it's a touch interface. You don't have to necessarily hit the buttons. And yeah, it just makes studying a lot more easier when you're on the go. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to catch all the Remno tutorial videos in your inbox, make sure you subscribe. And I will catch you guys next week in the next one. Goodbye.